Hey, my name's Molly Paul, and I'm the campus administrator at Flagstone. Um, we are just so excited that move-in day is coming even faster and faster every day, it seems. So it'll be here in the blink of an eye. We have some photos here, the most current photos from the project that are going to be cycling through today. So hopefully you can enjoy getting a sneak peek of what it's looking like. It's really coming together beautifully. I think you guys are going to be very happy when you finally get to see it. So today I have a special introduction. I'm going to be introducing the Resident Services Director for Flagstone. So her role will be to be your um, kind of like your go-to. You've got questions, concerns, feedback. You'll be going to her with any of those things and she'll be on site at Flagstone full time. Her name is Cassandra. So she's coming on up. So I'm so excited that you guys get the chance to meet her today. Hello and good afternoon. Um, my name is Cassandra Slazuski and I'm so excited to be here and to see all of you and um, to be your resident services director at Flagstone. I've been with Presbyterian Homes for nine years. Um, so not new to the company, but very excited about um, this new campus and getting to know each and every one of you. I um, am originally from Wyoming State, but have been in Minnesota for the last um, about 10 to 12 years. I have a, a son who is six and a half years old and my husband Luke who is a high school teacher. So I'm excited for you guys to get to know them and for all of us to become a part of the community with you. So um, I'd also like to introduce um, Steve. There's Steve. Um, he is the project developer for Flagstone. So he's gonna provide a few updates for us this afternoon. Nice to meet all of you. Alrighty, good afternoon everybody. It is countdown time. Uh, there is a lot going on on the site. Um, I'm just going to here give you some of the highlights. Um, this week, curb and gutter and asphalt is going in the back. Uh, that's a big milestone for us. Uh, the site, as I reported previously, uh, it's been really soupy when it rains. And so for us to get the roadways in, um, that helps tremendously. Inside the building, a, uh, AP is really busy with just finishing the areas. You can see by the pictures, most of the work is happening in the commons area, uh, with the pool area. I was in yesterday and the grill, the outdoor grill is being framed up in, and so the courtyard's being finished off. Uh, I've been, uh, the healthcare center, most of that is done, and um, I do the owner's punch, and so, I punched most of the units in the healthcare center, so we're right on schedule with that. The city has also given us permission to start moving in some of our furniture for the healthcare center, uh, which has been good. So every single thing we can do and move upstream is good so we can deliver and have a good product when you move in. So things are really on pace. Some other things that are happening, um, once we relocate the residents that are currently in Castle Ridge Care Center, we're going to go quickly to start abating and demoing the, uh, the Castle Ridge Care Center because Oppenin is the re uh, retail developer and they're working with some organizations that want to start in the fall um, so they can get open next year. So we have a super tight schedule where we're going to relocate all of the current residents that are in the healthcare and that next day we're going to start with uh, abatement and demolition. So you'll see quite a bit of activity. The goal that I have is to get everything graded and pad ready by the end of October. Um, so uh, for those who've been in construction, it's a pretty, pretty tight schedule to get that building down and demoed. So uh, with that, I'm, you know, I, I mean, if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. Um, but the message to give you is things are looking good, uh, it's on time, and uh, we're just, I'm, I'm really excited to be here today because working on it early on, uh, this is why we do what we do, um, to bring, to make community, to bring family in, to have everybody come in. So this is a great day for us, we're super excited. So any questions you have for me? Yes, what's your estimated move in date? Estimated move-in date, Walter's asking. Um, Chelsea's gonna go through that, but September 24th is the first day that we'll start with moving in. September 24th was, is the first date that somebody can move in the community and Chelsea will follow, go
going through the instructions on how this is all going to work and the next steps. Yep? Is it possible to come in sometime just to measure your units? Gene is asking a tough question for me right now. Is it possible for someone like Gene to come in and measure his unit? Um, unfortunately, you can't come in now because we're under construction and I can't allow that for liability reasons. Um, we are going to have a dusty shoe tour coming up where people can come in. We'll have certain units set aside that you can look at, but you cannot go in, to your apartment, and I can't allow everybody to go into the apartments when I'm still under construction. Um, hope you understand, but for liability reasons, it's just not going to happen. Other questions? Sorry for that, Gene. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I'm going to stick around, so if you have a, any particular question, uh, please ask me. But um, introducing next, Chelsea, and everybody knows Chelsea. She'll be giving the update on uh, the next steps, so I'll turn it away. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm realizing now that there's a handful of you that I haven't met without a mask on, so it's nice to see all the faces here. And again, of course, if you guys are comfortable with your mask on, keep your mask on in this space. We want you to be comfortable with that, but um, this is just spectacular. Steve said it really well when he said that we have this vision at the start. We know how beautiful it is living in a Presbyterian Homes and Services community, and so to see all of the work on the construction side coming together just is warm our hearts it is a spectacular community inside um, the features are just outstanding and they've done a really great job but for us seeing the culture grow and seeing the residents start to get to know each other and form those friendships really is just exactly at the heart of what we do in this service so this is this is fantastic for us so thanks for being a part of today all right we are gonna do a walkthrough of the packet in front of you um, we're going to walk through all the documents in here, kind of detail what's what. We're going to talk about what to expect at the lease signing. That's when you're going to come in to do the residency agreement signing and bring in all the remaining documents. We are going to talk about the move-in process and how that whole stage is going to go. And then we're going to end with just a few housekeeping notes. Um, there are a few people that I do want to introduce. We have, um, as, as you saw, Steve, who's going to be sticking around. So any of those construction or development related questions, we will forward to Steve. Um, we also have a rep from Gentle Transitions here, so the move management company. If anyone has questions specifically related to kind of the actual move process, a little broad range questions, then we'll, we'll refer those to Lee to help answer that as well. And then of course you guys met Cassandra. Um, she is going to be supporting, she started at the Flagstone sales office and she's going to be a great support for us in the community. She's kind of going to be the go-to person for all those um, social service type needs as you transition into Flagstone. So let's get started with our move-in packet that you have in front of us. I see most people have opened those up. I'm going to see if this will work to do this here. OK. Maybe not. Is this OK? Can you hear me? Yes? OK. Super. All right, on the right side of your packets, we have all of the information that we are gonna need filled in and returned. So try to keep those separated. The right side is everything we're gonna need returned. The left side is full of just general information. There's some um, points of reference, some general information on some available services, and so that's all organized on the left side of your folder. On the right side, the first document we have in here is the welcome letter. This is just detailing some basic information about Flagstone and the move-in. So as Steve mentioned, our move-in dates for Flagstone are September 24th through October 24th. So that's that 30-day period that you would have noted from all the documents we signed at the reservation time. Uh, rent start is within 30 days of that certificate of occupancy, so this references that 30-day time period. 
The next document we have in this packet is the What to Bring to the Flagstone Lease Signing Meeting. This is a handy checklist to keep with you in your folder. The remaining documents in here are documents that will be filled in and brought to that meeting when you get together with either Molly or Cassandra to do the residency agreement signing. So the first one in here is the communication consent form. Oh, I'm going to sidestep for one minute and note, this is being recorded and will be mailed out. So if you want to review this at any time, this will be emailed out as soon as we have IT make all the edits to it. So you'll be, you'll be getting a copy of this to kind of rewatch, to revisit if you have questions about anything on here. Okay, back to the packet. We have the communication consent form to be filled out. This is pretty... Um, pretty basic on what you're comfortable with us sharing regarding your, your move into the community. There's the basic um, automatic payment form in here and you bring in a blank check with this. We have the key fob, the Presbyterian Homes and Services Building Access Security Key Fob document. On this one we would just ask that you fill in how many keys you want and if there's anyone additional aside from just you or, or a spouse coming into the community. All apartments have two keys assigned and if you want any additional there's an ancillary charge for that detailed on this document. So just fill in the basic information of how many you want, if there's anyone additional that you want keys to give to and then we'll do all the signing of that document when we get together. The next information is about the garage policy and agreement. And if you flip that over, there's a fun little surprise on there that the garage stall is only $60 a month. So I apologize for misquoting everyone for the last year and a half for $15 over. <laughs> so you're welcome for that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so much applause, that's beautiful. All right, the next form is the resident profile. This is just a really simple document that we use to gather information for billing purposes only. So side A is the one that we want filled in. Do what you're comfortable with filling in on the other side. We need billing information, you know, address, social security number, emergency contacts. It's up to you if you're comfortable with listing family contacts, financial and whatnot. But the first side we use for billing purposes. And um, I think most everyone that has a partner or a spouse living in the apartment got a second copy of these. If you did not, grab a second copy of this um, resident profile and a communication consent form before you leave today because each individual living in the apartment will need one of these. And then the last, yes. Why do we need social security number? For billing purposes, is there another reason anyone in the back can think of? Um, I think we're comfortable putting a question mark on that and coming back to it. I don't know that it's a requirement. Uh, for health services, I know it is, but it might not be a requirement for independent living. So again, if that's something you're not comfortable putting on there, we can address that later. Can you put both of them on there? Both? Yes. So yes, the question was, can you put both of them on there? We would need each individual to fill one of these out. So Terry, you would need one. Kate would need one. Um, and then the last document on the right side is what I'm going to ask that you mail back to us. So in this, in this paper clipped document, you have two sheets of paper and a stamped envelope. Now regarding the move-in date and time, we are asking for you to submit your preference for move-in dates to the community and your preference for days that you want to come in to do the residency agreement signing. So there's a spot on here for you to fill in your first, second, and third preference, as well as time of day. Flagstone is able to accommodate six moves a day, maybe nine if there are um, evening movers who are comfortable with doing an evening move. In the community we have three assigned doors and so there will be a morning shift and an afternoon shift and we're communicating all that information with you. You will get a document, a big map of the community showing where your move-in door is for your specific apartment. 
we are also clearly detailing this information to gentle transitions. So if you are using them for your services, we're closely communicating with them regarding the moves so they will know our buildings, in and outs, and whatnot. But we are asking that you fill in both of these documents, the move-in request with your preference for move-in days starting September 24th through October 24th. And then we're also asking that you fill in the lease signing agreement or the residency agreement. So this is going to detail your preference for days that you want to come to the community to do your lease signing, which is the day that you will sign the residency agreement. You are going to bring in all the filled in information on the right side of your packet. And you'll also bring your checkbook for first month's rent and the 75% entrance deposit that's still outstanding. And then on that, I do want to note, if there are any situations where that remaining balance is contingent on a home sale, let us know and we'll, um, we'll have a follow-up conversation just kind of about the timing of that payment, should that be contingent on a home sale. Any questions on what you see in your packet in front of you? Yeah. Yes, good question. Kathy asked if the residency agreement signing is going to be prior, done prior to the move-in date. Yes, I would say for most people that's going to be done prior to the move-in date. And depending on the time of your, of your lease signing and the time of your move-in, we could do the apartment walkthrough on that date. Um, what Steve had noted earlier is that we can't have any residents in the community doing the walkthrough until the construction is complete. So there is a factor dependent on what your lease signing date is and your move-in date as to when you can do the walkthrough, but those could absolutely be separate dates. I mean, it's possible that you would even have, have a date that you come in to do the residency agreement signing, a date that you come in to do the walkthrough, and then your move-in date. Other questions about the packet in front of us? Yes. That's a fantastic question. He asked if General Transitions is following a seven day a week move in calendar. It depends on your move manager and the movers you're using. So that's a good question to ask. If you're using Gentle Transitions or another moving service, get in touch with them ahead of time to see if they do Sunday moves or if they do evening moves. So evening would be considered like a 6 to 9, a 5.30 to 9, or a 6 to 9 kind of time slot later in the day. Some, some movers do, but they'll charge an additional fee. Some just flat out say no to Sundays or no to evenings. So that's something to ask your move manager um, prior to sending in that document. What are the time for morning moves? Morning moves are 8 to 12, 8 a.m. to noon. And then afternoon moves are 1 to 5. 1 to 6. It says 1 to 6. Final answer. <laughs> Trust the documents, not me. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So Donna asked, what day will you know, what day will you find out what what your move-in date is. That's as soon as I compile everybody's information. So if you have in the back of your mind what you want those dates to be now, feel free to feel, fill that in and just leave the document here with us and I will get all that tallied. Um, so as soon as I get everyone's back, we have a big calendar that we're working to fill in considering your apartment location, your move manager, your preference for timing. Um, because we can do six moves a day, we're likely to be able to accommodate those, but should we not, we'll obviously be in touch with you to come up with a plan B. But the goal is to have that done within a week or within a week of getting everyone's back. So hopefully soon, uh, you know, if, if it's been a matter of weeks that I haven't received someone's, they may just have to be put on the next wave of kind of calculating timelines. Um, that's a good question. If you guys are comfortable with looking at it through the remainder of the week and maybe popping it in the mail over the weekend, that would be great. That way I can have them all in the office early to midweek next week and then hopefully have an answer by August 1st. 
I know this is hard with thinking of when to put the house on the market and, and listing and closing and all that. So we're anxious to get that information to you just as you are to get that information to your realtor and move movers and move managers and whatnot. Um, we're going to move on to the lease signing, the residency agreement signing, and kind of what to expect from that, um, from that next meeting. So Molly or Cassandra will be getting in touch with you to schedule your lease signing. And again, you're going to be filling in your preference for the lease signing and mailing that into us. And they are going to call you to schedule that time. So you will come to the sales office, to the Flagstone sales office where you've been meeting with me up to this point. And they're going to be walking through the lease with you, answering any questions you have about the residency agreement. We did put a copy of the residency agreement into this packet of information. This is just a sample, so don't fill this one in. This is just a sample for your reference. We will have the official copy for you at that point. Um, there's a couple of ancillary charges and attachments to the back of this that we're still making some final notes on. So there may be just a couple of adjustments prior to you coming in. So use this just as a reference. The official one will be signed when we get together for that residency agreement signing. At that time, we're going to be giving you the resident handbook, which is kind of the, the manual for community living at Flagstone. It answers a lot of those frequently asked questions regarding, you know, grills on the patio and um, can you have alcohol in the dining room? All those, all those, I mean, that's just two that I've heard frequently. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> those are... The, those are just a couple of the questions, but this resident handbook really walks through a lot of those, and it's a it's a great reference for you just to even keep in a, keep in a drawer and pull out if if you need some bedtime reading. You are also going to be receiving your phone number at that time. So as it stands, Flagstone has a block of phone numbers assigned to the community, and so every resident apartment has a phone number attached with it. There's no charge for the phone that's included in your monthly bill, your monthly rent, but you'll have a phone number assigned to your apartment. We will have that information available for you too at this lease signing, and we will have a preferred vendor list available for you should you decide you want to change the flooring in your apartment after having lived there for a couple years or you need a painter to come in or whatever that looks like. We'll have that um, preferred vendor list available for you at that time. We'll also give you a document detailing your garage stall and storage unit and any of those specifications then too. Um, and then one thing that we did not include in the move-in packet is a pet policy document. So if you have a pet coming in to the community, we would just ask that you would grab that document on the way out and have that filled in for the lease signing as well. Any questions about what to expect at the lease signing meeting? Yes. Is not the carpet is not what was that Walter? Stain proof. Oh, stain proof. Sure. Okay. The question was about the carpet not being stain proofed, and if it's possible to have that stain proofed before you move in. I will ask someone that, and they'll answer me, and we'll get back to you with that. Okay. Sure. Yes. Window coverings? Window coverings are standard. On the windows in the apartment, it's a standard horizontal blind. The color is called coconut, blends in really well with the wall color. And then the patio doors, the sliding glass doors out to the patio doors, all have a white vertical blind. Okay. Other questions about what to expect at the lease signing? Yes. Yep, there's a copy of the lease in the packet. It's just tucked, it's, it's um, paper clipped to the resident, or to the renter's insurance coverage form. On the left side, and it's on the left side because you don't need to fill it in. That's why, the left side. That was a quiz. I'm gonna ask another one later, so pay attention. Um, the, she brings up a good, or 
made me think to, of the renter's insurance piece on here. Renter's insurance is not required, but highly suggested. So speak to your homeowner's insurance or whoever your insurance agent is and have them um, write up a policy for you for what it would be to transition over to renter's insurance, or if you already have that, it's just a transition over to the new address. Okay, let's move on to the move-in day. Oh yes, question. Everybody gets a phone number. No, the phones need to be supplied. Okay. We do not provide phones. And then we can add curtains. Yes, yep. She asked about the phone number. Um, the phone number is provided. You need to provide your own phones and answering machines and whatever else goes along with a landline. And then what was your other question? Curtains. Oh, yes, curtains. She also asked about curtains, and yes, those can be added. Earl? Yes, that's a question we have out as well. So there may be a potential upgrade to add on. The question was if you can make a long distance call from your, from your landline. Um, that's a question that we still have out regarding if it's gonna be an additional charge to upgrade and add in long distance or if that just comes standard now. There's also a question out if there's a charge for call waiting or if that comes standard as well. So stay tuned to that. There are a few, and I was gonna to speak to this in the housekeeping area of the presentation, but I can speak to that now. So with cable, phone, internet, those three services are provided by Comcast. So the phone is a standard landline included in your monthly rent. You bring your own phone and, and answering machine as you would have in your home. I know very few have those anymore, but we're gonna go back to that. It's a way of us communicating easily with you. And that's also how you'll let guests into the community by um, pushing a number on your phone when they call you from the, from the call box out front. Cable services are provided by Comcast, and there is a channel listing in the back of your folder on which side? Left. Yes, because why is it on the left? Yes, thank you all for that. The channel lineup goes through the digital starter, so it's everything you see on here plus one on the second page. This is all included in your basic cable package. If you chose to upgrade and include like additional sports package or movie package, that would be done through Comcast and um, we will get you in touch with them to get the pricing and whatnot. So that would be just a direct relationship with you and Comcast build to you directly from them, separate from Flagstone. But we are taking care of kind of the base, so it's just an upgraded charge instead of you know the whole charge, yes. Um, we're gonna move on to the actual move-in now the move-in portion of your next step with Flagstone. So we will get back to you with your specific move-in date and time. And what that means for you is that you have a designated space where your moving truck will park, where you will be using that elevator, that hallway is yours to go up and down, and that is considered your move-in time. We are also assuming that that's probably the first day that you're gonna spend, be spending overnight in the community as you know, you'll have your bed and dresser and clothes and kitchen items and whatnot being delivered. So that, that move-in time is when we have it designated for you to have the truck parked outside, that door is yours, that elevator is yours. That doesn't mean that you still can't have gentle transitions helping unpack or kids kind of coming and going. It really just is relaying to the time that is designated for you in that specific area. Your move-in day may be the same as your rent start date, but it might be different. In a situation where you plan to move in kind of immediately as soon as possible, you'll get your keys that morning, that would be your rent start date. That's the same day that you move in. If it's a situation where you want to get your keys and maybe spend a couple days bringing over the fine china or maybe you want to have a painter come in and paint the bathroom, your move-in date is going to be separate from your rent start. So the rent start date is really the day that you take ownership of the apartment. You get the keys, you have access to the unit. Your move-in date is the date that you have access to that space where you are physically going to be moving into the community. So those are all details that we'll go over with you at the lease signing. 
the date that you're going to fill in on that on that request form is when you want to move in, when you want to have your truck outside moving into the community. So that's that's kind of the difference between those two dates. They're not always the same. For some, they will be. Not everybody, though. Um, when you're requesting your date, just you know, be a little bit flexible. As as there are 30 days in the month, we're able to accommodate all the moves easily in that time frame. Um, and I know that there are some special contingency factors with maybe having sold a house and renting back or whatnot. So we will try to work with you as hard as we can, as best as we can, to make sure we accommodate that move-in date. Um, you will have a big map of the community that will show you exactly what door is yours to have for moving into the community so you will know where to direct your movers, where to have the moving van come, your movers come and whatnot. Um, we want to make sure it's as smooth as possible. That day you will also be assigned two individuals that are going to be kind of supporting you during this big transition. You'll have a move-in buddy which is going to be a member of the leadership team in the community and then you're also going to have a resident ambassador which is a peer, another resident that's moved in that's going to be welcoming you to the community. So there's going to be a handful of support, staff members, other residents, um, and if you're using gentle transitions, you're in good hands because they, again, know the ins and outs of our community. They know where to, to dump the boxes and the recycling and whatnot. Um, and, and so, you know, our goal is for it to be a very smooth day of moving in to Flagstone. If you are having furniture delivered later, which I know many of us are in that situation where you've ordered something and it's been pushed back for months, um, we just need to know when that truck is going to be coming. Those are generally moves that we can accommodate just right through the front doors of the community. So if they give you that window of time they're going to be there, just let the receptionist know and they'll just note to let them in. We may ask that you meet them down at the front desk just to welcome them in. But that doesn't need to be its own arranged move-in date. Again, the move-in date really is just when you are physically going to be moving into Flagstone. Um, Another, this is kind of interesting along the lines of ordering furniture, there, it seemed like last year at this time when we were going through some of the customizations and we had a hard deadline of knowing when we needed ceiling fans and upgraded blinds, it seemed like how could we ever need to have this information in a year ahead of time, but we're grateful we did because there are very few delays with any furniture and items in the units. Um, as, at this point, there's no delays with any items in the actual apartment units. Appliances are in, and, um, and so for the most part, everything has gone just very smoothly relating to that. In terms of actual community furniture, office supplies, tables, chairs, and whatnot, most of that has also been um, on time. The, estimate, the, kind of the estimated percentage of product in place by the time we open is about 85%. So that's really wonderful. I mean, it is a little bit of a scramble on this last couple of months with getting everything in, but um, we're very grateful for the team that's, that's been kind of on the backside of this doing all the ordering and getting everything in in an appropriate time frame because it's going to be pretty well finished, furnished by the time by the time we're moving in. We also have all of the fitness center uh, weights and machines coming into the community, so those will be usable at that September 24th time frame, and the pool is going to be full and ready to go then as well. So we're, you know, come prepared with your swim trunks and swim hats, we're going swimming. Um, that's kind of it for my notes. So thanks for letting me talk up here forever and not answer questions about Comcast. <laughs> <laughs> I just, there are some things that I can't fit in my head and that's one of them. What, um, what other kind of generalized, broad community questions do you have? Just for the sake of time, let's, um, if there's anything related to a specific unit, let's hold off on that and send me an email or pull me aside after. But yes, sir, let's start over here. Uh, I have a bike. Yep. And I understand there's going to be a bike rack. Yes, sir. Is the bike rack in on move-in day? Yes, we got a nod from the back. The bike rack will be in on move-in day. Do we need to secure our bikes with locks, or will, we, will it be secure just in the rack? Do we need to secure the bikes with locks? Yes, we do. And we need to secure the storage units with locks as well. So you'll need a padlock for the storage unit. Unrelated to bicycles, but going along with locks. Yes? Will the pickleball court be ready? Pickleball, pickleball court ready? Yes, pickleball court is ready. 
Okay, I like it. Kathy? Yes, I forgot to mention this. She asked if there's going to be dollies for helping with the move-in. So we will have, no, groceries. Yes, oh yes. Yeah, so starting with move-in, we'll have grocery carts, flatbeds, dollies, kind of a variety of those available. So when you have groceries in the back of your car, pull up, unload them into the cart, take it upstairs, bring it back down. Okay, I'm going to close it down now. Um, this is really lovely, and from the bottom of our heart, we are just so overjoyed at seeing this culture grow and the community coming together. And every time I step foot in Flagstone, I just am so excited. I know a handful of you have gotten a weird FaceTime call from me with a hard hat on saying, look at your apartment, because it really is just beautiful. It's a beautiful community, and I am so excited for everybody to see it. And I know you all are just going to be so thrilled to have the opportunity to show off your new home to your friends and family. So. Can't wait to see you guys. If you have any questions, pull us aside. Otherwise, thank you so much, and we'll see you all next month.